forgive it to you and it is for yours she was astonished again that to me i am the bitter most bitter enemy of the prophet and he is treating me like that and when after some time she accepted the same in the same meeting same sitting she accepted islam she said one thing and she said that before this moment there was nobody on the earth whom i hated like you i hated you the most on the earth and now nobody on the earth whom i love like you now you are the most beloved of me so this is islam this is islam and within moments it changes the heart of a human being in such a way this is the The, the, the knowledge of hadith and quran the manners of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which changed the hearts of the bitterest enemies in moments in such a way that the extreme of hatred it now becomes the extreme of love and it it will change like that she she did it like that and after that she proved her self that she was a really a respectable woman because she was sending his sons her eldest son was yazid on whose name muawiya radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu named his son yazid ibn abi sufyan and he accepted islam before abu sufyan before the conquest of makkah and she was um, sending them to jihad etc etc and uh, um, uh, treating them very well and very beautifully and respectfully so this is the change which comes because of the manners of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if we accept and to own up those manners if we act upon that you will be successful people of the world and it will be shown to us with our own eyes and we will be able to see this and this will happen always this happened in the days of uh, the tataris as well this happened in the days of the uh, uh, salahuddin ayubi as well this happened in the days of this taliban as well and this, we are we are seeing it what i want to what you to ponder is that actually the islam makes a muslim that he loves the sample of the prophet uswa of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in such a way that this is the most precious thing which he has he loves it and he follows it and when he follows it he goes up and up and high and high and he goes on so this is the message actually that if we want that we should be successful we are actually fighting with each other and the benefit is for the non believers we are the uh, weakest in the world and we are being treated like uh, not human beings look at uh, modi what is he doing in in uh, kashmir and in india and what these people are doing in uh, this iran etc etc they are doing in syria and what what is the way of treating the muslims and even the the western powers how they treat muslims in such a way that they are not even human beings they think the, the the animals have more rights before in their eyes than a muslim muslim doesn't have the same right even which animal has so if we want to change it the only way is that we have to buy the wisdom and the, the wisdom is the uswaf rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and we should love this uswa that this should this is very very uh, precious thing in the world and if we have love it and we adopt it then inshallah we will go high and high and high and high and may allah make us like that and may allah and those who are learning hadith and teaching hadith they are doing their duty except actually because they are learning the uswa of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they are teaching this uswa to do to the human beings and they are the greatest people of all times
and uh, no doubt about it that what Muhaddisin did throughout our history. Look at it, Bukhari, Rahimahullah. He was living in uh, Medina and uh, a time came when for so many days he didn't have even a small something to eat. He didn't, didn't have a, a, a small point, a, a amount of uh, any food. He was just uh, doing, he was doing everything with an uh, uh, empty uh, stomach, starving and doing. And people, there some people came and brought food. And uh, he was happy, he said, how did you know? He said, one of them said, we saw in, uh, in our dream the Prophet Wasallam, and he told us, that my people, why he said that they are my people? Because they were the scholars of Hadith, of the sayings of the Prophet They need food. And according to his orders, we have brought it to you. So this is the way how Muhaddis is valued in the eyes of the Prophet and the eyes of the Allah subhanahu wa Allah gives them this way. And this was always like that. And even in these days, I have seen with my own eyes that the teachers of Hadith and the students of Hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps them in such a way that human beings are astonished at how this is possible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us that we love Hadith Above everything else, above the Quran and Hadith, we should love Allah and the Prophet and Islam above everything else, inshallah. And we should start learning Hadith, and this is wisdom, and start teaching it and advertising it to others. Allahumma amin. Barakallahu lakum. Wafakarallahu wa iyaakum bil khair. Uh, now we just meet Inshallah a little bit from Sahih Muslim Sheikh. Sheikh, there is a question. Yeah. Yeah. There is a question from brother. He didn't yes. come. Yes. He didn't come because he's working. And he asked me to ask uh, this question, uh, if you don't mind. Please, please. please. Yeah, Jazakallah Khair, Sheikh. Uh, Barakallah Fiqh for your picture. And may Allah make it in your... Make us all. Make us all. Barakallah Fiqh for your Sheikh is asking about Ahlul Hadith in India. You know that now there is an attack against Muslims in India. What's happening to Ahlul Hadith in India? Yes, it is a good question. Actually, Hadith uh, in the beginning went in the southern part of India, very in the very south, in the days of uh, the, the uh, Khulafai Rashidim. But those people, they were few, and they were Muslims, and they remained in that side there. And it didn't come out to other parts of India. The, uh, when the uh, Muslims uh, conquered India, and Muslims went there, so ulama, at that time, most of them, they were following the fiqh of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala. And uh, they were depending on the, uh, the books of fiqh, and they thought that this is a, in such a way it is a law, and it is the, uh, very easy to act upon it, and we will, they were doing it. But at the time when they, they were, the, 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 the Muslim rulers, they became, started became, becoming weaker, there were some people, First of them was Sayyid, this, uh, uh, I forgot name, I will, I will let, them let you know afterwards. He was a very big uh, scholar and he was actually basically a Sufi mystic, like he was uh, not uh, the traditional Sufi. He was uh, a very, very uh, good scholar as well. When he saw that the Prophet, the, that this is our, uh, the, the Prophet ﷺ has said it, that uh, he, that there is no 
Salatullah and he said that we are not saying. Then he started and he announced that peace, I will lead the prayers. Because the Imam will at least himself recite the Fatiha. I, I can't uh, uh, pray without Fatiha. And when he made it, he announced it, the other good people also, they started learning. And a small movement started. But actually, it started with Shah Waliullah Rahimahullah. Shah Waliullah was a basically, originally he was a Hanafi scholar, but he was a scholar. And he knew Hadith as well. And he traveled for Hajj and he went to Hijaz, and there he bought Watta of Imam Malik. And when he studied that, and Watta is a very beautiful book. Imam Malik Rahimahullah has compared so many things with it. Even he read, uh, when he saw it, he knew that Hadith is the actual thing. So he started in his own school. He started teaching them Hadith properly, not thinking that Fika is enough. He started the teaching. This, this was properly, he said it. And afterwards, his grandson, Shah Ismail Shahid, was a great Mujahid. He actually started jihad in Afghanistan in those days. And he was, uh, uh, he was the one who really started the movement of Pakistan. Because he went to Afghanistan and then he came back to the northern areas of, of, of our KPK, Peshawar and the other areas of this year. And he came here and he fought with the Sikh at that time. The rule were, rulers were Sikh. They have conquered the Punjab and they have conquered the KPK. And they were ruling over there. He fought with them against Muslims and they were, they were against Muslims, he forgot, and he was martyred. And he was the person who, who, whose followers, especially those who, was, who were with him uh, in jihad, they also accepted that hadith is the first thing. We should learn hadith and we should act upon that. And we should pray according to the hadith, according to the prayer of the Prophet So this started like that. And the, the scholars, among the scholars, the greatest man, his name was Sayyid Nazir Hussain Dehlavi. He is called Mia Sahab. And most of the people in uh, India and Pakistan, those who taught Hadith, they learned Hadith and taught Hadith, the teachers of Hadith, and those who are called Ali Hadith, they are the followers of his tutors, his pupil, his uh, uh, students, of this, uh, students of this Sheikh uh, Nazir Hussain Dehlavi, Alayhi Rahman. These people, wherever they went, they tried to build mosques because, because of taklid. People didn't allow anybody to say Amin loudly in their mosques. This is the small way of thinking. This is actually a very... But this becomes a good start as well. When they, they were asked that they, should, they, they are not allowed to say Amin, and they were... Uh, uh, making a joke of this and they were saying as, as such words which we can't use them even because this is the act of the Prophet and they, these people they understood that they have to build their own mosques when they started building their mosques it was the start of Ali Abhis in the India and Pakistan subcontinent because the mosques were used for the teaching of Hadith as well to the students and this was is, this is the way how they become bigger and bigger in number. And now, Alhamdulillah, they are everywhere, everywhere we have the mosques. They are, Alhamdulillah, and we are building new and new mosques, Alhamdulillah. And Alhamdulillah, now others, they have at least, they know, know now, even the, the Bukhaladeen, uh, they are also have now known now that what we were teaching and what we are acting upon our fiqah, yes, they love it. And we also respect fiqah. Young Banifa is a very respectable personality. Barakallahu fi wa rahimahullah. He was a great scholar. But he did not intend that he will uh, 
with his own choice he will leave hadith and he will act upon something else he will he never attended it he just uh, followed because in kufa it was a uh, not a peaceful land and there were very few hadith there and whatever hadith he knew he acted upon that and whatever he never knew he started ijtihad and there is the way a fiqh of Halafi it came like that but he has taught his followers one thing he said is a sahal hadith of a whole whenever you come and you listen to a sahi hadith then that is my my mazhab as well you have to leave my <laughs> my saying or fatwa and you have to follow the hadith he, he said it they are very great people really so now they know even the others even the in, in the, the uh, madarsa badaris of the ahnaf they now know and now they they are coming nearer to hadith they have started more attention Mm, they pay attention to Hadith. Inshallah, we hope and we are um, inshallah sh- sure that a day will come that all of the Muslims of the India and Pakistan, they will agree upon this thing that we will look to fiqa when we will not have clear Hadith before us. But if we have Hadith, we don't need to look at to something else, inshallah, and this is the best way to do because the real Islam is what Abu Bakr followed, and Umar followed, and Usman followed, and Ali followed. Did they follow Imam Malik? Imam Malik was born after that. Did they, did they follow Imam Hanifa? No. Actually, the real Islam is that. And the Prophet ﷺ said, when he was asked, when he told that there will be a time when people will be fighting with each other, and Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, what should we do at that time? He said, that follow me and Khulafai al Rashidin al Wahdi. And my Khulafai Rashidin, he followed them. So, they are the real holder of his holder. They are the real Muslim. And it was not this fiqh or that fiqh. Inshallah, a day will come. The Muslims, there is the only one way of uniting ourselves. And that is that we have to decide that whatever the Prophet says, we have to follow it. And if we don't see any clear uh, order from the Prophet at that time, anybody who follows any fiqh, we have no difference with him. We respect him, al fiqh, etc., etc., and we don't. But where the hadith is there, we have to follow it. This is the way of uniting the Islamic Ummah as well. There is no other way. Inshallah, we will. We should do it. We should uh, propagate hadith. We should teach our students, our children, and our students and our young people hadith, and ask people to ponder over it and follow it. And inshallah, a day will come when we will all be united. Inshallah, Aziz. Without that, there is no other way. This is the way. May Allah unite us. And the day we are united, and we will be united because of Hadith, the day that will be the day of conquest of the whole world by Muslims, inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Actually, uh, the name of the great scholar I used, Sheikh Nazir Hussain Delavi, because he, his followers, they started this teaching of Hadith everywhere and started buildings of mosques, etc., etc. Actually, he is uh, the one who is called Sheikh Al Kul because he was the uh, teacher of all the scholars of Hadith. And uh, he was a great, great, great man and very pious person and very, very, very uh, learned scholar as well. And his piety has so many beautiful events that I don't have time, otherwise I will uh, narrate something, inshallah, some the other, that uh, what was his karamat? He was such a big man. So, Sheikh Nazir Sandelevi's students, they started it, and Alhamdulillah, now they have succeeded in uh, this propagating uh, this maslak of Ali Hadith in the whole of uh, subcontinent and most part of Pakistan as well, etc. Alhamdulillah. There is another way, one, and that was in Sindh. Because in Sindh there were some people 
who learned from the beginning when Muhammad bin Qasim went there at Kankar Sindh and he started uh, uh, mosques there, they learned something. Some scholars remained there. And one among them was one scholar, Badiuddin Shah Sheikh Badiuddin. He was called uh, Peer of Jandah. And he was uh, uh, teaching here in uh, Islamia University, Medina as well. And he was, uh, uh, the, the, even Sheikh Ibn Baz, etc., they have uh, got his, uh, uh, this uh, Sanad from him as well. He was a big scholar. He was following the, 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 the teachings which he, they got in Sindh. That's a small amount. But actually, the whole area. This uh, Punjab and most of Sindh even and other and, even, and the subcontinent, it was uh, uh, the hadiths were propagated here by the disciples of and students of the Sheikh Nazir Hussain Mohammed Stadiwi. And Alhamdulillah, my father, he was uh, the student of uh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Haq Al Hashmi. Sheikh Abdul Haq Al Hashmi was the first man for whom. Dar e Arkam was bought and Dar al Hadith al Khariya in Makkah was found, and because of him it was done, and he was the first Sheikh al Hadith there. He was the father of, the, the teacher of my father, and he counted my father one of his sons, and he asked his sons, and I will name one son, and you must have heard his name, and that is a big scholar of uh, Arab worlds. World. His name is Sheikh Abu Turab al Zahiri. Sheikh Abu Turab al Zahiri is the son of the teacher of my father, and he was when Sheikh Abdul Haq al Hashmi came to, to our Nazirul Arab and came for teaching here. He asked his Abu Turab to go to my father and learn Hadith there, and he was studying there. This Abu Turab al Zahiri is a big scholar in the in the Arab world, such a big scholar that the Cairo University, when they saw his books, especially on Hadith, they asked him that, please honor us, attend our convocation on such and such date, and we are going to offer not PhD, d -lit from University of Cairo. And he is the man who wrote so many things he, he criticized some, some things about Abbas Mahmoud al aqad he is a big scholar, a historian of Egypt and of our, of, of our world. Uh, there was a, some questions, somebody asked him about the, who are the akhwal of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so, maternal uncles, etc. And there was some discussion about that. And uh, Abu Turab al-Zahiri wrote in such a way that all the, the Egyptian scholars also, they were astonished. They said, yes, this is the scholar who taught us these things which we were no, we didn't know that at the time. So this is a big scholar. It's uh, uh, this uh, Abu Turab al-Sahiri. And Alhamdulillah, he showed me uh, a letter of Sheikh al-Bani. There was a publisher in Makkah. He wanted to publish his uh, book, Sheikh al-Bani's book. Sheikh al-Bani wrote a letter which he had, Abu Turab. He wrote that uh, on one condition I will give you permission to get my book published there in Makkah and sell it. That you go to Abu Turab and ask him that he should look into my book, edit it, correct it, and if he agrees, okay, do it. And, and do it like that. So actually, this is the bigness of the scholars. This is the bigness. They, they respect each other. And they respect knowledge. They don't see that but, uh, who is the most famous person, etc., etc. They respect the scholarship. And this is the Usu of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what we learn from the Uswa of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is also a big scholar, Alhamdulillah. And now he is with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and he was a big, big scholar at the time. Um, when I went first time to see him, he gave me his 25 books, very, very big in Hadith, especially most of them, without Hadith, etc. Alhamdulillah. And he was a big scholar at that time. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Even Sheikh bin Baz, etc., they respected him very much. And they said that if Abu Turab al Zahiri says something, then we are sure that he says <laughs> after uh, proper research, etc., etc. So may Allah give us the, uh, this uh, way that we should learn hadith, teach hadith 
and spread hadith and inshallah we will as it has happened in uh, this and it is happening in um, uh, subcontinent india and pakistan inshallah the, in the whole world it is easier in arab world because they the, the in arab worlds the taklid is not such a, uh, hard as it is in our area the, the taklid there is very hard <laughs> they don't uh, accept others at all so inshallah they will come that we will be united and alhamdulillah i have the honor that my father is the uh, uh, with one um, this uh, uh, teacher is uh, uh, two two top and one rather one uh, after Nazir Nazir Hussain one teacher and then it is my father Alhamdulillah this is good luck for me as well and uh, Alhamdulillah his uh, students are here as well Sheikh Abdurrahman Amir etc etc they learn from him they are in, um, uh, in uh, america and canada as well and they are even in arab arab countries alhamdulillah my father is alhamdulillah he, he taught uh, bukhari for more than 60 times alhamdulillah and uh, the love of uh, the scholars is with each other is like that that uh, uh, sheikh um, the, the Imam of uh, uh, Haram e Makki, Sheikh Subayir, he went to Multan, our uh, school is near Multan. He went there, he, he was told that uh, Sheikh Sultan Mahmud, it is about the name of my father, he is uh, uh, near I. So he went directly to him and after uh, reading Atraf al Bukhari and Muslim, he asked him to give him his, his salad. And he asked, this is the bigness of scholars actually. They, because they respect scholarship, etc. I went once when, um, for Hajj there, and the director of Darul Hadith al Khairi at that time was Sheikh Ali Amir Aklan. He was basically a Yemeni, and he is a very beloved student of Sheikh bin Abbas. I saw him, alaykum salam wa rahmatullah, and he told me, that actually we need your father, he should come and teach Hadith after Shaykh Abdul Haq al-Hashmi. This is scholars. And this hope, this love is because of Hadith. No other thing. So inshallah, Hadith will make us united. And Hadith will, inshallah, be able that, uh, with Hadith we will be able that we should be united and we will be inshallah above others, inshallah, in everything. May Allah make us like that. Last part of the verse, which I'm going to use some hands from the same, listen to each other. Okay. Uh, just uh, maybe you can put the, the pocket that, uh, what do you call it, that will prevent the echo. That, 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 <laughs> yes. Yes. Kafir. Doubt about it. Because the Kafir, he is living only this life. He doesn't believe there is another life. And whatever he has, he spends here. And when he goes, everything is left here. And he goes empty handed in the, in the grave. And there is nothing. And for, for him, he thinks that this is the life here. And he treats this as Jannah. The, on the other way, the, uh, the, the woman, he knows that he is for a small time here. And he thinks that the actual, beautiful, most gracious life is waiting for me. And before that, where he is living, this is not worth anything. 
for him he is living just like as somebody is living is for a small time in the in the, in the uh, jail he is like that and this is the attitude of a muslim woman and the kafir difference the kafir thinks that this is everything and he is trying only for this for this world and the attitude of a woman is that he will do everything for the real life for the eternal life and for him this way this this place is just for some small time and he has to bear every difficulties etc etc when they are the, he, he sees some difficulties he doesn't uh, complain he says oh, this is a very short time and i'm here for small time like if somebody is in jail and is waiting that when he will be free he will be going to his own home sir my home is there and i will go inshallah allah is so this should be the attitude of a woman that he should not love this place this world and the life here that he spends everything here and all his actions are for this no we should not do it barakat see the matan because i didn't properly listen this is hadith number 2 ya mashallah ha an jabir ibn abdullah anna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam marra bi suq dakhilan min ba'zi al-aliyat wa an-naso ka nafataihi fa marra bi jaddi asakka mayyit mayyitin فتناولهُ فآخذ بأذنه ثم قال أيكم يحب أن هذا له بدرهم؟ so it was dead. he small uh, the soft spring of a of a goat it was dead and he said that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم this was the way of teaching and this is a very wise way that any of when who is from you who will like that he will he buys this one one uh, for, for, for something. قالوا والله لو كان حيا كان عيبا فيه if it was uh, living this is dead now it has <laughs> no value at all but if when that was living it had a fault in it there was something لانه اسق there was he was uh, uh, this was he was sick like that فكيف هو ميت فقال والله لا الدنيا اهون والله من هذا عليك you have no price for this you say that this has no value etc this whole world before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like that it has nothing like a dead offspring of a goat not more than that nothing at all so we should understand the real value of things of this world and the real value actually which is waiting for us there alhamdulillah subhanallah proper difference in the matan the main is name is meaning as the same alhamdulillah